Well, I've just returned from the field and I have some tests stored in my real world certifier. I'd like to import them into Excel and then print them out and give them to the customer. Let me show you how we do that. The first thing we do is we take our cable, which you get with the real world certifier, and I plug it into the uh, serial port in the back of the computer. Like so. And then I plug it into the tester. The only thing you have to do with the tester is have it on. And next step, let's get the cable out of the way here. Next step is going to take our software. And I'm not going to copy the software onto the hard drive. I'm just going to run it right off the CD. There's no lengthy installation procedure for this software. That's one of the things that makes it so convenient. If you're at a customer's site, you can actually run it right off their own CD if you wish. Give the customer copies of the test right off their own uh, printer. All they have to do is have Excel. Now, it says that there's two files on there, a readme.doc file, which you should read when you get a chance and uh, the spreadsheet file that uh, is the file that we use to import. Now the first screen that comes up is a question, should I enable macros? And you always want to answer yes to this because we use Excel's own macro language to control the communication between the tester and the PC. Just as a note for Excel 2000 users, if you have your security set at the highest rating, it will not allow you to enable macros. So just go to Tools and lower your security setting, and then it'll allow you to run macros. So I'm going to enable macros. And then it's going to uh, immediately search for, uh, for a tester to see if a tester is connected to the cable. And you can always see if it's talking, because uh, the Real World Certified tells you it's talking to a PC. It warns you that unsaved readings are erased. Now this doesn't mean the readings that are stored in the flash memory of the tester. It means any that you might have put in there before you shut it off and fail to store. Those are gone. But as far as the readings that are stored in the flash memory, they're there until you go into the tester itself and erase them. Importing them into Excel will not erase those readings. It says it found one tester. So we'll say, okie doke. So we've detected the tester. Now let's import the readings. Download from network tester successful. Now let's edit the report. So we're just moving from left to right. It says it found nine tests. Now this is the perfect time to rename these tests if we wish. Cable 1 I could rename to Building 35, Outlet 14 if I wished, and so forth and so on. Instead, we'll just take them in sequential order. You can store up to 250 tests. And then later, because it's a spreadsheet, I could go into those spreadsheet cells and change the name at my leisure. So let's go ahead and finish. And you'll see it imports a spreadsheet for each cable. And believe me, when you have 250 on there, it's quite a show to watch these tabs being created by Excel. So, Cable 9 is the latest spreadsheet, so let's just uh, go File, Print, and let's see what Cable 9 was all about. We're done with this, so we can unplug it and shut it off. Uh, cable 9. Well, the first thing we noticed is that uh, th we performed both the level 1 and the level 2 tests. If you just had performed level 1, you wouldn't have these bottom two graphs. So we completed level 1, continued on to level 2 to actually connect uh, the cable under test to a uh, network port. Uh, it tells us that it's a 51-foot cable 
gives us all of the specs that some of the other video clips in this DVD have spoken about. Uh, the wire map, the propagation delay prepare, the skew prepare. Here's your cable category of the cable, almost a CAT6 cable. Our predicted cable speed. Here's the signal level of the switch that it's plugged into and the predicted cable speed of the combination of the cable and the switch. So a typical report. Now we could give this to the customer as proof that we tested both the device and the cable or we could just give them a copy of the spreadsheet. I could just go file, save as, copy it off to a diskette, give the diskette to a customer email the file to the customer if I wish, or I could continue printing and make a booklet up to give to the customer. And that's it.